checking out a lot of cookbooks here lately. And also, uh, daughter-in-law Peggy is here. And I'm from the Lakes Region, right below you guys, right uh, down in Laconia, Alton, Gilbert. It's an honor to be hosting on my Dr. Paul's campaign uh, chairman uh, in New Hampshire. We also have Senator Sanborn on board and Senator White, so we're glad to have support from so many senators. Um, I really got the honor of uh, working with Rand Paul back in 2007 when he was campaigning for his dad, and I got to really know him well because we were driving around, and he is a true believer. He is someone who at that time did not want to run. He didn't want to run for office. He had a successful practice. Uh, he was a family man, and um, but I think he saw the call to duty, and he ran, and we're so happy that he did because he's done a fantastic job. And uh, Senator Rand Paul introduced his father. Thank you. Thank you. What a crowd. What a crowd. Anybody here for Ron Paul already? Just be quiet, and I'll probably just be undecided. No, no, we'll take whatever cheers and approval we can get. Many years ago, uh, Reagan was uh, getting ready to go to a summit with Gorbachev, and he told his staff he was going to tell this story, and his uh, staff said, oh, no, if you do it, there'll be an international incident. And Reagan did anyway, went ahead and told the story. It, it, said, it, it seems that there was an accountant in Moscow and this accountant had wanted to buy a car, so he saved up his money for years and years, because nobody had much money in the Soviet Union. There was only one car dealer, it was the state. It was a crummy, piece of crap car, but it was a car <laughs> nonetheless. So he saved for years and years, and he went into the state dealership, and he put his money down, and the surly bureaucrat said, well, that's all good and well. Come back in 10 years, and you can pick up your car. And the accountant didn't miss a beat. He said, well, would that be on a Tuesday or a Wednesday? And the surly bureaucrat looked at him and said, I told you it'll be 10 years. Do you want to know if it'll be a Tuesday or Wednesday? He said, yeah, the plumber's coming on Wednesday, and I don't want to miss it. <laughs> and when I first started telling that story, I thought, well, people in America won't get it because how could we ever conceive of the government owning our car dealerships and our car manufacturers? But you know, the new... The new acronym or the new abbreviation for GM, right? Government Motors. Government Motors. We've come a long way, but we've been going a long way really in the wrong direction. We've been going towards the government owning businesses, owning banks, bailing out people who made bad decisions. Anybody here think that a banker who makes $100 million a year on Wall Street or $10 million a year on Wall Street, if he makes a bad decision and he's going bankrupt, or we should bail him out so he gets a $10 million bonus the next year. Anybody believe that? No. I got started running as part of the Tea Party movement in 2010 because I was unhappy with Republicans. I was unhappy with Republicans who doubled the debt under George Bush, who doubled the size of the Department of Education, and then had the audacity to vote for this bank bailout. So that's why I got involved. People say, you can't run and say Republicans are doing a bad job and get elected as a Republican. But I guess you can, because it makes a difference what kind of Republican we get. I tell people, the Republican Party is an empty vessel unless we imbue it with values. Now you've got a lot of candidates running around New Hampshire saying they're Reagan conservatives. But Reagan would be rolling over in his grave to hear people say they're Reagan conservatives when they voted to double the size of the Department of Education, which half of them on the stage did, when they supported an individual mandate, the linchpin of Obamacare, when they supported foreign aid around the world, all of these things are inconsistent with the conservative wing of our party. There's only been one candidate who through the years has voted against the spending bill, against the appropriation bills, who has voted for a balanced budget, for a balanced budget amendment, who is opposed and never voted for any budget that wasn't balanced. Now some of them will say, oh, I'm, I've never voted for pl Planned Parenthood. Everyone on the stage voted for all those budgets that always had money for Planned Parenthood. 
and they put in a line saying, oh, the money won't go for abortion, they all voted for the budget anyway because they were a rubber stamp. They never had the courage to say no. But there has been somebody in Washington who's had the courage to vote no, who's been one of the few candidates who has voted no, sometimes even by himself. There's only been one candidate in Washington who's never been accused of flip-flopping. There's only been one candidate in Washington who the lobbyists don't even bother to come to his office. <laughs> And this is the anomaly that bugs the heck out of people and they can't understand it. They can't understand this narrative because they want to paint Ron Paul as someone who doesn't believe in a strong national defense. And it's absolutely untrue. You know who the soldiers trust with their money and their contributions more than any other candidate? Ron Paul! <laughs> There's only one candidate in the race who's gotten more contributions from active duty soldiers than all of the other candidates combined. And I think a soldier, a young man or woman who puts their life on the line, who sends a contribution, and a lot of them have been sending them to Ron Paul, shows that there are many soldiers who are thoughtful about going to war. The war isn't always the answer. They will fight for their country. They've volunteered to go to and fight for their country, but they're thoughtful about it. They're very thoughtful about it, and they know that they're putting their life on the line, and they want to have a commander-in-chief who will have the same thoughtfulness, and I give you that new, and hopefully, commander-in-chief, my father, Ron Paul. Stage and give a pretty good speech, don't you think? <laughs> well, we're going to